Welcome back. We are live at Adepticon 2024. It is Friday, March 22nd, day two, but still plenty of content to come. My name is John Helfers. I am the executive editor for Catalyst Game Labs. Uh, I'm the one who herds the cats, my great crew of authors who produce fantastic novels that you're all hopefully reading and enjoying. With me today is definitely a man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyways. Uh, I have the pleasure of interviewing for the next 45, 50 minutes, Michael A. Stackpole, of course, Michael should be known to the vast majority of Battletech fans as the man who created such seminal novels as the Warrior Trilogy and what we have over here, the hardcovers of the Blood of Kresge Trilogy, as well as many, many other books. He's worked in the Dark Age. He's written just tons of sourcebook material. Uh, Michael, it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Thanks. Thanks. Were you were you a local TV person in your previous life? Because I was, I, was I was expecting you to throw to me, and, and now we have Mike Stackpole with the weather. <laughs> well, here at Adepticon, it's snowing lightly, but it's beautiful. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great to have you here, and I look forward to diving into it. Man, other than Mr. Weissman, Mr. Jordan Weissman, I think right. you've been with Battletech. The longest, I mean, it's got to be pretty close. The longest and, continuously, and Mike, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you were there almost at the beginning. So why don't you give folks a kind of a capsule summary of how you came to write uh, what became the Warrior trilogy? Um. Well, you know, uh, back in back in those halcyon days, yeah. uh, uh, in the middle eighties, <laughs> right? In the middle eighties, um, uh, the um, uh, literally Dragonlance had come out. Yes. And splashed big, exploded. And yeah, so media time was a thing now. It, yeah. it really was, and and there was sort of a, a a thought amongst a lot of companies that we needed fiction, we needed uh, novels. Yeah, uh, and uh, Facet had uh, uh, brought out the. Uh, I think by the time I got involved with the line, uh, the first two books were out: Decision at Thunder Rift, right, and uh, Ardeth Mayhar's Sword and the Dagger. Uh, oh yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so far, those so far famous lost novel, <laughs> right? And and uh, I think that, again when I started, I, I think the how Steiner's source book was out, and they sent me um, uh, the Dracon source book in manuscript in, in proofs. Yeah, basically. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, as a, we were at we were at Origins, uh, I had just finished a novel, um, which later got published as uh, Italian Revenant right. by Bantam. Um, and and I was a, it, though I worked for Flying Buffalo. Uh, Rick was always very nice. Rick Loomis, the the uh, the late uh, owner of of Flying Buffalo, right. was always great about letting his staff do freelance work. Yeah. So you were uh, in the, you were in the industry for how long by this time? Ah, uh, so that would I was in well my first adventure got published in seventy eight while I was still a freelancer. Okay. And then in seventy nine after I got college right. Yeah, 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 and okay, and, so and very early. They graduated graduated from college and moved uh, out to Arizona from Vermont to uh, to work for Flying Buffalo and okay. and continued to do projects uh, for them and uh, then moved into the editorial staff there. Right. Uh, for a lot of different projects, um, but uh, Rick would allow us to freelance, and yeah. so I went around. I remember it at Origins, uh, went around and uh, it was Origins '87 and. Uh, they talked to Jordan uh, and said, hey, I see you got a novel out. I've written a novel. You know, I'd be interested. And Jordan, quite rightly, looked at me like, oh, God, not, not, not another. Not another noob coming to pass me in a car. Yeah, yeah, well, pass me on this great novel. Especially, especially, oh, God, not another game designer. Right, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you know, game design. That's what I need like a whole other. That's right. I mean, you know, you're a game designer. You're about probabilities and math, which is, is not really your is not your your literature degree. You know, storytelling. No, no, no. And um, but uh, uh, I I promised that I would send a, a copy of uh, Italian, or I, I sent a disc uh, off. That had a uh, a tech short story in it, so they could see it could handle explosions. Right. And the first six chapters of this novel, um, and then they sent me. Uh, it was uh, Bastille Day, oddly enough, I remember uh, very distinctly <laughs> that a uh, bunch of material they'd sent because they were saying, well, they had said, you know, we got Renegade Legion coming up, maybe we'll do some novels for that. Right. But in the interim, because they didn't have a manuscript, they sent me a bunch of BattleTech stuff. So I devoured that. Yeah. And when I got a call, uh, you know, it was Ross Babcock, uh, uh, Jordan's um, partner, mm -hmm. who said, um, you know, read the first six chapters of your book. I'd like to read the rest of it. 
And I said, great, I've read all the stuff you sent me. Yeah. If you ever got need any story ideas uh, for anything in Battletech, let me know because I, I've read this. I got a couple of ideas. Okay. And without missing a beat, Ross says, that's what we want you to talk about. We want you to write a trilogy. <laughs> and well, So the scene is one book under your belt. Right, one book under my suddenly belt. suddenly you're being offered a trilogy, and the and, timeline was what? The uh, timeline was th- literally... As, as as Ross continues in my shock silence, right, right, you know, hundred thousand words each. Yeah. Okay. You got nine months. Can you do it? That is a tall order for any writer. Oh yeah. Experienced yeah. or beginning. Right. So right. naturally, you said. Uh, naturally, I'm I, I. In my mind, what I'm thinking is, if I say, "Are you out of your mind?" I get nothing. Right. From but the- if I say yes, then at least I get the shot. Yeah. You know. And so I said, of course, piece of cake. Um, and uh, so, yes, you know. Yes, we would know that, but we're telling it for the people who maybe haven't picked up the books. Yet. Right, yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. So, uh, uh, and, and and that was basically it. You know, at, uh, at Gen Con, which was about uh, another three weeks off, you know, we met. And yeah. they gave me the general general idea of what they wanted to be doing. Right. Uh, I worked up some outlines, and uh, and, and we were off to the races. Uh, eight months, one week. So I had to right. Eight weeks of that. Well, yeah. Actually, we were prepping for it, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. frantically scribbling down notes and questions and everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was they were real good about um, both getting me the source material that I needed and also uh and this for which I'm very thankful is yeah. is trusting me to do things correctly. Yes. Because that whole the the whole Capellan invasion, all of that, uh how the war went, who attacked what, where and why, that was all me sitting in my apartment in Phoenix, you know, with you know, with, with spreadsheets yeah. and you know, it's going to take six weeks to get from here to there. Right. Therefore, you know, right. so these are when these waves hit. This is what you're going to do and go. So, uh, by the way, Turbo, we started on time, not not early. We started on time as opposed to yesterday. Yeah. But chat also, I see chat is up and running. Folks, this is sure. your opportunity. If you want to Mike, ask Mike questions, now is your chance. We'll be doing a bit of a Q&A later on. So right. feel free to throw them up there. Yep. So. You have the opportunity, what a lot of people would consider the opportunity of a lifetime. Oh, yeah, yeah, you. yeah, yeah. And once you start hyperventilating, <laughs> and maybe you stop breathing in the paper bag, how did you approach this massive space opera trilogy where you were, you know, literally it's it's intersphere spanning? Right, so you're, right. You've got all right. the great houses, you've got those all back and forth, a, a sure. massive a wedding to plan. Yep, an yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. You yep. know, and uh, and uh, the fox to, to blame for it. So uh, right. where did you start? Well, you know, it, it, it's sort of like the old, you know, the old riddle. How do you eat, a, eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite, One at, bite a at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the first thing that was, was critical was um, we had a lot of characters who were in the universe that I was going to have to use right. that were established. And so you get to know those guys. Yeah. And then we also, I, I, obviously, there are going to have to be some new characters. Sure. And in looking at the new characters, you wanted to make sure they fit in the universe. So, you know, for instance, a, a new cast of characters mm-hmm. uh, were the Kellhounds. Yes. You know, yes. and so, so you know, I had to, I mean, I, you know, my first, my first impulse was, as everybody else had at that time, whatever mercenary group you created was the best mercenary group ever. <laughs> okay. And uh, but, but, but I'm really trying to establish them as heroes, of course, for this new, this right. new universe. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I did. It's somewhere in the back of my mind. It was like, no, you moron. Everybody does that. <laughs> and so I said, and so literally from the first, the Kellhounds were going to be the acknowledged second best mercenary unit <laughs> in the universe. That way, I figured part of that niche. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on to it. Yeah. See, everybody, no matter who thought their unit was the best, they'd be happy to acknowledge the Kellhounds as second. Right. Uh, you know, if you wanted to fight, sure, Great Death Legion versus Wolf's Dragoons, nobody cares. <laughs> the Kellhounds, they're right there. They are in the argument. You know, they're always a mix, baby. That's right. Perennial silver, which is okay. <laughs> <laughs> when the characters, so established characters are one thing. Right, right. When it was a new character creation, how much input, was it a collaborative thing with Jordan, with Ross? Did they have, or no. did they just said go? They said did go. Come up with it. There and... wasn't enough time for collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the closest we got to to heavy duty collaborating in that in that whole process is when I was writing uh, Warrior Repost, writing the second <laughs> book. Right. And uh, I literally was was, you know, just starting it. 
And I get a phone call from Jordan during uh, the FASA Christmas party. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and he says, oh, by the way, this is also what's happening in your book with Comstar. Which you had not heard anything until that phone call. Exactly. Oh exactly. God. And then it was like, I have to do that. I have to do that. I have to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Piece of cake. Writing that book yet? I, I had started the beginning of that book. Okay. I, I'm, I'm certainly so outlining had, stuff like that. So it was it was fairly easy. You hadn't like written three quarters and had to throw some out. It was easy right. to pivot. It was. But you had to adjust your plot. Obviously. Well, it was well, it was all Comstar stuff, and nice. we knew the wedding was taking place on Terra, and so this just became a secondary line that that ran through the back end of that. Right. 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 Uh, right. And 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 in retrospect. The way that that stuff got handled was really kind of necessary because the first half of that book has got no mech combats to speak of. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was because I was so burned out from the first book right. with mech combats that I wasn't ready to do more. But that allowed me to do some. It was a bunch. Yeah. So, but I was able to do some espionage and yeah. a lot of character building, and also, you know, obviously having Justin getting to see his family. But right, right. You know. So actually, there's, Not a, dealing there's with a great it, yeah. question on chat I want to ask from sure. Jeremy Thompson. Justin Allard's struggles with people's reactions to his heritage was great and set a tone for Battletech fiction. How, why, or how, or why, or and why did you pick this as a core theme? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, for me, just as a as a as an individual, I have always uh, just been just uh, I have not liked prejudice. I have not liked intolerance. And, um, yeah, look, I'm, you know, I'm an old white guy, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I don't run into that at all, right. except for two experiences that I had, uh, again, in the early eighties, one, when I'd moved out to Arizona, cause I grew up, I grew up Catholic, uh, in new England, uh, in a town where, you know, the, the groups were French Catholics and Irish Catholics. Right. And then you're, then you're Protestants. But mm -hmm. I, I remember coming out to my car one day in the first summer I was in Arizona and there was an anti vehemently anti Catholic pamphlet under the under the windshield wiper. Wow. And I had just never in my, you know, very innocent life faced that. Huh. And then shortly thereafter I was on a uh I was on a trip in, to the UK for a gaming convention mm -hmm. and I was in a, a train car. Uh and, and again I you know, count myself as being Irish American. Right. And I'm just chatting with a, a mother and her daughter. Uh, and suddenly the mother, this is an older mother and an adult daughter, uh, but suddenly the mother starts going off on how dirty the Catholics are and how, or how dirty the Irish are. Oh. And, 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 you know, it, it, for me, you know, I'm sitting there as I'm a visitor in this country right. and I've got somebody, you know, bad mouthing me and my kin and everything like that, but I don't dare say anything because right. that could right. be trouble and I'm a long way from home. Yes. And. And so those two incidents, as as mild as they are, yeah. sort of you know were enough to 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 hit me very very emotionally. Yeah. You know to to feel that pain, and, and this is the thing about being about being a writer, as as well you know, and and everything else. Your job as a writer is to be a a translator of reality, and and to layer oh, into it, yeah. but, but to yeah. layer into it the the emotional and the intellectual, so that. You make it so other people can understand and empathize yeah. with what these characters are going through. And these characters suddenly become essentially play tests of life strategies. Right. You know, and, and how you're gonna cope with these things. Yeah. But if but if, yeah. if, if somebody goes back through any of I mean, if you go back through my catalogue of literature, the vast majority of the books, at least eighty percent of them, have got an anti prejudice theme or yep. sub theme. Yep. You know, running through them. And, of course, um, Justin gets it. I'm not going to spoil anything for those who haven't read this yet, and I find it hard to right. are people, but I know they're out there who haven't. Justin, of course, gets it from both sides. Right, in right. His, in the course of his career where he ends up with Lau, and yep, he's yep. facing the new prejudice from his former family. And, the, right, and on the other right. side, of course, he is the interloper. He is yep. the, the infiltrator, yep. the, the, you know, uh, the person who doesn't belong there either. I, I, have, a, yeah. I have a friend who, who used to be in uh, law enforcement is also black. And as he noted, you know, uh, he's he's too black to be blue, 
yeah. and he's too blue to be black, yeah. you know, and, and so, so you, stride those two worlds. Exactly. Right, exactly. Uh, actually, okay, we have another one. So first, I want to I want to pay you a very interesting compliment from Slinger Law. These are notoriously decent books. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! There you go. That, 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 that is notoriously decent. That's that's good. Yeah, that's going to be my epitaph. Notoriously decent writer. Yeah. But he follows up with, "Oh man, he says stack." So I guess we're going to call you Stack now. Okay. Can you explain the meaning behind the Kelhound Aerojock stating the Panthers? And this is a quote: "The Panthers hug their like balloons and on guard." I don't know if they're even reading this, but if you are, boom. So, I, do you remember that reference? I, 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 it sounds like a reference I would use. I don't remember it specifically, but you have to remember, I wrote those books thirty-five years ago, and there have been a lot of words. A lot of words get buried under there, but yeah. I'm assuming uh, it's a dropship reference myself. Well, yeah, it's pretty much a, a drop, yeah. dropship reference. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, okay. Uh, Madcat352 is, I think, leaping forward to Blood of Kerensky. My favorite scene is Phelan's Wolfhound versus Vlad's Timberwolf. Right. And Phelan's computer jumping back from Catapult to Marauder. Oh, as it shows Madcat, the classic first, the first yes. confrontation. Always like that scene. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is, I think, one of the classic scenes written in Battletech. So, you know what? That's a great segue. So, you have Warrior under your belt. Right. And the reviews and the reaction, I assume, are positive, obviously. Because yeah, well, it's we're not reviews, but the reactions are positive, yeah. This was the dawn of time. Dragonlance, they they didn't they, they didn't get these out for pre-review or anything. Well, it wasn't even it wasn't a question of getting them out for pre-review as much as these were gaming books. Why would they be reviewed? Oh yeah, they're not literature. Tell the Donna story when you oh, first Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. So, so uh, you know, you've got to you've got to share this one. The editor the editor at FASA, um, Donna Ippolito, uh, 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 the first call I got, I had sent in uh, uh, Warrior on Guard. And the first call I got was Donna, the editor, going, you know, this is like a real book. <laughs> yes, yes, in fact, it is. <laughs> no, that, that was on the job. <laughs> so, so Warrior's out, right. and they come back to you. And I, we've never, I've never talked on uh, about how Kerensky has always been worried. So they come back to you with like, "Hey, we want to do this." So tell well, me how Blood of Kerensky came about. So, so literally, what ended up happening was, um, Fast and Fast Interactive were creating the pods, which are right over here right. off camera. Yeah, we have right the first here. time at Adepticon, by the way. Yes. Right. So they were creating the pods, so you could literally sit in that combat uh, cockpit and drive it, and and um, because of this, they had created Omnimax. Uh, right. So we had to be able to introduce the Omnimex and introduce this brand new technology with new weapons yeah. and things like that into a universe that had been in an entropic spiral. Right. So we had to have this influx of new technology, hence the creation of the clans. Right. And uh, so when it came time to look at doing that, um, it wasn't going to be we could introduce this overnight. Yeah, because we had just gotten, we'd have to have a chance to rebuild everything like that, consolidate. Right. So we called together the first of the development summits. Yeah. And uh, so it was uh, uh, Jordan and Bob Charette and uh, Ross Babcock and me and a couple of other people were there. Do you think Sam Lewis um, was was Bill Keith there too? Uh, no, Bill was not. not that first he was one. not okay. there. Okay. Uh, and uh, the five of us were, uh, five, six of us were in um, uh, Ross's apartment in Chicago because it wasn't too far from FASA. Right. And we sat down and hashed out what we were going to do uh, to push the universe forward. And the initial question we had to ask, we had to answer was, is it going to be a 10-year jump or a 20-year jump? Uh -huh. And I remember Jordan saying, so, Mike, is it is it 10 years or 20 years? What do we got? And I said, right. Because I had the spreadsheet in front of me, and yeah. and uh, and I said, well, if we go ten years, we got Dan Allard and two other guys, right? You know, okay. Right. If we go twenty, we've got all the children. There you go. And it was like, okay, twenty years in it, and yep, uh, boom and done. Yep, boom and, done. Uh, and so and so that was it. That was why we decided to make that jump, and then yeah. we just built the universe, uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, and that just really changed, I think, almost everything because you had this it did. influx, it did. this massive. The threat is literally you leap from, you know, 
Warriors a great introduction, but this one's like all is for all the cards. It's oh yeah, 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 the yeah, 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 yeah. It was so, all yeah. it was all stepped up. It was so, you know the difference between a Triple A baseball team and the World Series. Yeah, yeah, you know. Do you think? I mean, honestly, I'm going to ask you uh, a brutal question. Sure. Obviously, it would have been extremely difficult, but do you think you could have done as well on this one if you hadn't had Warrior to cut your teeth on first? Oh, and, and um. I think that having done the Warrior books made this possible and and so much better. Yeah, I think we yeah. could have done a pass on this, but yeah. one of the things that that was really really important is that in the Warrior books, I got to introduce a bunch of characters and I got to play with and and sort of uh, extend the development of a lot of set characters. Yeah. So they really became mine. Right. And right. those were the characters then that had to carry these. I mean, while you're bringing up Victor, uh, 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 Hans is still there. Yeah. You know, yes. and so, so, that's inter so that interaction can happen. Right. Yeah, so yeah. so if those characters hadn't been built up and set up in the warrior books, right. they never would have been in the position. They never would have been that strong. And we couldn't have done the things we did in the warrior books right. just because we wouldn't have that foundation. We we had not yes. explored the universe yes, that exactly. much. Does that really set the tone and yeah. the, the groundwork for these ones? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean it, it, it was an imperfect analogy. World War One, World War Two. Yeah. Okay. You know, that, that, yeah. I think that's so. actually a, a Pretty sound one, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, Pablo, I want to answer your question about uh, earlier about the trilogy or spine novels in the Ill Clan era. Uh, things in the Ill Clan era are moving so fast, it, it would right. be kind of difficult to tie up an author for three books. However, we, we have what I consider spine novels, like the forthcoming yeah. Trial of Birthright. Yeah. I think it's very definitely a spine novel because we finally returned to Terra. Right. After three years of real time and after Hour of the Wolf, we're going back there this year. So we're going to reveal what's been happening on the on the birthplace of humanity. I, so, yeah, I, I think it's also really really important to note that we we've, we've been doing the seminar development seminar development meeting stuff yes. that we were doing back in the olden days, and the real difference and the and the reason that the 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 trilogy of spine novels is not as important anymore is because we have a lot more venues. I mean, you were able to put out the standalone novellas, right. the True. novels, shrapnel. the collections, and yes. shrapnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that so that literally, to my mind, this is just my impression. As we talk about all of this stuff, we're getting the spine novel fiction and development that we always would have. Right. It's just spread out between more authors that we never had the opportunity because we never had the stable before this to be able to do true. that. I mean, we were. I'm not relying on just one author anymore. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But the other, the other thing is honestly, there's so much going on. Yep. It yep. would be impossible to cover in one book. And and the other thing, which is really really cool about having all the different authors and all the different things that we're doing, is yeah. that we get a chance to work together and just pass things back and yes, forth. Yeah. So it is you a know, collaborative universe, which is fantastic. Right. You know, as you guys look down in, it's going to be a pretty tight weave, but you're going to be able to follow some of these threads and go, oh, I lost yellow over here, and there it is. Right. You know, well, my so. previous meeting before this one was with three authors talking about their interweaving stories and how this one partner right. is going to go through all three of them. Yep. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Thompson. Okay. Here's a... Jeremy follows back, notoriously decent enough that I decided the Warrior Trilogy was the first novels I've been reading in German while I learned German. So wow. There you go. Wow. There's, there's your compliment. Well, that's, there. yeah. That's okay. fantastic. That is You've got two people asking, Mike, what has changed in your style from back then to now? Is that's it a writing style, how you approach a book? Yeah. Sure, sure. That's a real good question. Um, So I think now uh, I'm a lot more comfortable handling stuff that's a little bit more nuanced sure. in terms of the development of the characters. I also think, especially with Battletech, the universe has matured to the point where we oh, can yeah. have those. Yes. You know, one of the things we've been talking about this whole weekend is that uh, I've been doing the the um, the Death Kangaroo stories and, uh, Which you I know, love. right, and, and uh, you know, uh, 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 Brian is doing the Fox Tales. Back when we were doing these books, there was not room in the universe. There was not space in the universe to be able to do that sort of material. Or shades of gray kind of characters. Yes. Right, exactly. exactly. And and stuff on those lower levels. I mean, when you look at the Death Kangaroos, these guys are basically a roving street gang. Um, you know, and and I mean, maybe a couple steps above that. You know, they're not, at, not. aspirationally, they're a couple steps above that, but, but realistically, no. Um, you know, but but the point is, is that we didn't have the freedom to have those smaller scale stories 
because we had so few th- spaces to put right. things out right. that everything had to count for more. Yeah, you know, I mean, so. you're really setting things up for long term, yeah. but that foundation didn't yeah. leave for nooks and crannies like the Fox Patrol, right. like the Death Rangers right. would fit into now. But right. I'm really, really happy we have uh, such a broad foundation that we can bring in different aspects of it. Yeah, yeah for sure, yeah, yeah. for sure. And so, and so, and that's the other thing I think stylistically where I've 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 grown. Um, is also as the universe has grown, characters can be more nuanced. Yes. They can they can have other issues other than just uh, um, uh, you know, are we going to defeat the bad guys? Right. Uh, right. And you, and you say, I mean, and, and, and I mean that really, uh, you can go back and you can look at um, uh, Nelson Geist in uh, Natural Selection. All of a sudden, yes. you know, here's a guy who's not having the I have to be a hero. <laughs> problem he's got he's How got other issues yeah, yeah exactly you the know choices i'm making to yep. survive and you know now, and... <laughs> if i have to go how am i going to end it not spoiling yep. again that yeah was yeah a, yeah a tremendous novel but but, but you know his arc was just oh, unreal oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know i mean yeah. this is a guy who's got who's got literally got family problems yes you know which which were just the sort of things we never addressed before right because right. you know that was the universe wasn't ready for it yeah. yeah. All right, Dan, I saw that comment. We have multiple authors where? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you one of them? Um, Grumpy. No, no, no. That's just another one of my pseudonyms. <laughs> uh, Grumpy coming in more home worlds. Grumpy, I, I really hope you back the Mercenaries Kickstarter because you all helped us launch the War of the War of Reaving trilogy, which is, of course, all home worlds. Right. That will be coming out. The, the, the books are being written now, uh, coming out. I'm not exactly quite sure when, but they'll be coming out soon. So that should, uh, that should, the three authors in a trench coat. Yeah. So that should be looking forward to that. And we'll have more yeah. on that as well. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about, so now, so Mike, you, again, you've been involved almost in every aspect of it. Sure. Now we're coming to the new age of the Ilk right. plan. And I just kind of want, right. I'm curious to what your thoughts when we started moving forward. Of course, you were at the right. summit where we decided this right. was going to go forward. Yeah. And what, uh, what is your opinion of, of where, what we've done, the source books, the novels, and all that? I'm, I, you know, the thing which I really, uh, really liked about the last summit, uh, and and the direction that we're going to be going with the universe is that, and I had told Lauren this, uh, you know, as as Lauren and I were up by the blackboard, we were figuring something out. Everybody else was in the room just chattering away, and I just turned to Lauren and I said, "This is this is the way it used to be. This has the feel." Of what we yes. used to do, yes. and and so this the 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 turnaround, the energy, uh, the attention oh, yeah. to detail, it was so invigorating. It, yes. it really was, you know, the opportunities, and 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 it, so it was really funny. One one thing in the uh, as we were in this uh, summit meeting, we were plotting out what was going to be published where, and we were just slotting all these things in. And there's one point where Lauren just turns around because I was watching from far, and he goes, he goes, hey. There's nothing for you in here. You know, where are we putting you in? And it was just because we got so much talent and so many people that want to be doing these things that, you know, it's really easy to fill out a schedule. Yes. So, yes, it was. so. Yes. Sticking to it for me sometimes is another option, but yes, it's filling it out. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, let's yeah, see. Yeah. Question from Jennifer Bixby. Hi, Jen. Michael, would you ever write a character with obvious autism? That's interesting. Um, I would not be averse to it. I haven't had that much experience of people with autism right you know right. so so as with any other character i try and write they would take a lot of research yes um you know when i was doing the the uh, when i was doing the x-wing novels i yeah. i do not fly a plane but you know <laughs> you, you 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 dive in you do the research and get it down I, I you know i think that would be fun i think the the trick for me is finding a story where that would be the character wouldn't just be there as a token right that that this would be integral to them to their development to their life story yes yeah so no yes absolutely it would take some research it would take, it would, some, it would take yeah, research yeah, no, no. to figure out the right place for it and then you know right, right. you know i mean you don't want to do the oh yes and now we're going to put you know the the autism the autistic person in a position where they can solve the day and then we shelve them again i mean yeah, yeah, you know yeah. no, no. people are not wrenches exactly so, yeah yes yes yeah. um okay madcat 352 will the capellans go to war with the wolf empire 
That's interesting. That's more of a Ray question, to be honest. But right, right. maybe. Yeah. I don't know if they. I think. I think the Capellas have bigger targets in their sights, as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't think they're so. compelled to do it. But no. But no. then again, when have the Capellas ever not been willing to go to war with yeah, the Cubans? Yeah. I mean, deliver wolf. a pizza late to Cyan, and you know you're suddenly at war. Right, let's face it, the Wolf Empire is not in a really strong position, so it's, right. it's possible. It's yeah. Possible. Uh, uh, let's see here. The uh, Mike Whitaker. This is interesting. The world is moving very fast in terms of real life versus in-universe time back then. Mike, maybe you can talk about this. I pitched a novel set in 3056, started in March in mid-90s, but had it rejected because FASA was already commissioning 3065. Did you guys kind of, were you moving quickly along timelines, like like real-world time equals, you know, one year equals four years maybe? Did you did you have? We were, was it a loose kind of moving things forward? It was, it was, it, it was almost a year for year. Yeah. You know that that we were that we were looking at, um, and and the way the meetings would go, we'd have a development meeting and come up with a five year plan. Yeah. And then, but we would do one of those every three years. Okay. So oh, so that, that you yeah, know so be, once that's kind of locked down. Right. Because we had out things, of the old one into the new one. Right. And and, and, and to give an example, um, Thomas Marek not being Thomas Marek. Right. Was something that happened in midstream. I literally was writing that novel. And went to write the chapter where we we're going to have the revelation about the DNA test. Right, right. And it struck on it. Uh, the question came to me, going, "What if he's not who everybody thinks he is?" Yes. And yes. and I called Sam Lewis, and so that was yeah. a sea change right in the middle of one of our three-year plans. Right, so right. so we we're being that flexible. You got to bust in. So Rem from Cattle's Game Labs has popped into the chat, and I need to get this to Rem. Rem, if you could please get out on socials that we are doing an author signing. This today, uh, Friday at 3 p.m. with Mike Snackpole, Brian Young, Phil Lee, Randall Bills, uh, let's see, Rusty Zimmerman, and whoever else I can cram into a table. So that's Friday, 3 p.m. today, author signing for Battletech Novels. At Adepticon. At Adepticon. Yeah. Yes, thank you. It was a you do signing. have to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have to be yeah. present. So, yeah. by the way, Mike Whitaker, just want to let you know, we are still looking for authors, and Shrapnel is our portal, so you might want to uh, go jump on it, just put type uh, yeah. Shrapnel submissions, or if, yeah. if you already pick up the reading, we hope you'd we look this forward to seeing a pitch for a short story or a short story from you again. You know, this is this is the one difficulty uh, about working in a tie-in universe yeah. where they have plans and they have an arrow of time. Right. Is right. that is that if you are not in that planning cycle, you know, you can't know what they're looking for. Right. But and that and, still covers yeah, all eras. Exactly. So you can start writing your 3056 maybe short fiction. Yep. And that yep, might actually yep. lead to something. And, and you never know. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Okay, we have a question from CR. What's going to happen to the exiled wolves that came home? Are uh, they just going to be stuck in Omega Galaxy to languish in obscurity? We should probably figure out. I guess they came home, and we should, at some point, someone should probably tackle exactly how they're going to go moving forward. That's a sure, good question. Sure. Honestly, I haven't given that a lot of thought, but at some point, someone should probably tackle that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there are a lot of moving parts, and that's now, you know, one that's in an orbit yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Dennis Burner, Assistant Spectrum, Twitter Giant Range. Yep, I, th I think you answered the autistic question. It, right, it's right. an interesting uh, point. Right. We obviously don't want them to be a token. We do not want no. them to be just a, a tool to problem solve. We want right, them to be right. a fully realized character because yep, that's what yes. this – that's what the stories in this universe are about. It's Absolutely. So you can have all the big snobby robots in the world yep. without characters to care about that are piloting yeah, them yeah, yeah. or doing diplomacy yeah. or leading a nation. But it's, the story's just not there. But the it's idea of doing a, a neurodivergent character? Yeah. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, right, yes, yes, Jeremy. Writing about mental health is really tricky to get right. That's absolutely yep. correct. Yeah. Um, just popped in as the video borking out or anywhere else, just on my end. I think Ryan, our, our great technical person, if there's a problem, he'll be handling it. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see, Mike Whitaker. I know there are shorts sitting here in Scrivener. Great, man. Polish one of those up and, yep. and hit us up. Do hit us up, man. Absolutely. Let's see. Any chance the Lyran Alliance makes a comeback? From what we've been talking about... Um, I think that is... A, if I shook the Magic 8 Ball, it'd be Outlook Cloudy. So, right, there we have plans for the Lyran Alliance, but I, I'm sorry, plans for the Lyran Commonwealth. Right. Uh, let's just say an alliance the way you're you're talking about it is probably not in the cards, and I'm only going to hint obliquely at that. So, because that's we have plans for that, but it's it's probably not the alliance you're thinking of. Yeah. So we're this, this is not the alliance you're looking for. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> there will be an alliance. It's probably not the one you're you're assuming. So yeah, but uh, yep. But there we have plans for the Lyrans. We have plans for everybody. Um. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Is the word of Blake gone for good? 
Well, if you read Ghosts of o- Obadah, I, I don't know. There were, they, mm-hmm. they made a, a, a quasi appearance in a recent, right. um, which I believe is still canonical. I'm not, that's a Ray question. Um, so actually, that segues into, I was going to mention it on the fiction panel, but I'll, I'll give a teaser. They are, they are as, far as, as far as I know, that's more of a game side question. As far as I know, they are gone for good in the current era. But I am launching a jihad fiction, a jihad era fiction line because there was literally very little, almost no original fiction produced during the, the that era because Wizkids didn't have really, that was Wizkids right, time, right? Yeah. yeah. Didn't really, either they weren't thinking about it or just didn't have the capacity to produce it. I want to produce that. So I want to go back to that time and rework that. As a matter of fact, just talked to Jim Long oh, about good. that, and he's very interested in coming back. So we are okay. we're only talking about stories that may constitute the resuscitation of one of the more famous mercenary units. That's all I'm going to say about that. There you but, go. Uh, yeah, it would be good to have Jim come out of retirement. Yep. Yep. yep, 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 yep. I would welcome him back. I thought those novels were terrific. I'd love to see more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah, he's yeah. good. He's very good. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Daughter of the Dragon filled with neurodivergent characters. As I recall, yes, that had a couple. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Are there book stories already walk, locked in for the the new wave of Jihad? Oh, uh, just what I was just talking about. That is a discussion right now. Um, I am, I am. We are in discussion about how we're going to approach that. Uh, I have some possibilities. I'm thinking of um, the the way to start. Kind of in that is pick up uh, Quest for Jardine, her BS's trilogy that just came out in paperback and an omnibus. That is a great kind of jumping off point for the Jihad. He did a terrific job with that. So Very cool. that's kind of our launch point, and we're just going to go kind of full steam from there. Uh, question for Stackpole. Oh, this came up earlier. What what periphery would you most want to write new fiction for? Well, I did. Um, uh, I had written some stories for the Hairbrain. Uh, for the Hairbrain. Yes, which yeah. we've been talking about. And right. Are those periphery settings? Those are periphery settings. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that was so that was, so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. We've been talking about bringing those back, yeah. and I I'm, and, I'm and, announce and, it here. I think we're going to do that. Yeah, and we I, are going to do that. Yes. And and I think you know with the, with the death kangaroos, I built in enough time and space. Right. You know that it would be possible to do stories in the periphery, play around. You know, it's yeah. just going to be what. You, you, know, you know, we could talk about the uh, the RC story if you want to. I, I I'm going to do it, assuming your agent. Oh, well, that technically would be, would be, yes, yeah, would be perfect. Exactly. That's true. That's that what I was true. assuming. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to mention that now? Uh, well, by all means. Uh, yeah. So, yes, Mike and I are in talks with Mike's agent to bring him back for novel like Battletech Fiction, which I'm extremely excited about. Right. And mm-hmm. Mike, that novel would be? Uh, well, that would be just chronicling uh, the, the adventures of the Red Corsair. Yes. Uh, that, yes. Uh, that first time out. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. which would be very exciting. It's basically, right. it's uh, Catherine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, Katrina, and, uh, Katrina, and Morgan and Arthur, right, running right. around the periphery, uh, yep. just going. So it would be cover unquote. It would be, it would be a prelude to Kelhound's Ascendant. Yes, yes. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's yeah. So it's not finalized, but we're far enough along that I feel very positive, and I'm I'm so excited. Mike has done great work for us. In short, uh, in our in our target box, you yeah. had uh, the uh, Spanner in the Sp- Works. Spanner in the Works. Yep. And it's just like I have to get more from this man. So we've been yeah. talking about it. Just got to reach contract terms, but we're very we're very far along, and I I feel very confident that it's going to happen. So yeah. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Uh, there was another earlier question about periphery fiction that someone asked about where would you want to set something, and I I for one love kind of the outskirts of the Wild West. Right. And I'm trying to get somebody to take on Abdul Abdun Recall. The bandit king up at the top of the periphery who's going to carve out his own empire. I feel that story really needs to be told. So I got to talk to some of my authors about right. who wants this, basically. And I, I think there's a great story there. So that's one thing I want to do is, as the editor. I want that story to come out because I think that character is going to be fascinating. Sure, sure. And again, sure. that's a character back in the day would be very hard to get out in fiction. But oh, now yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's wide open. So yep. let's see what else we have here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, who uh, my agents? <laughs> yes, yes. Someone took him on. Well, no, I actually, I, I actually have two agents because oh, uh, I've got a foreign agent. Oh yeah, and yeah, 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 and and I've got a domestic agent. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh, question from Blightbringer: What happened to the escaped knights of the Sphere after the Clan Wolf became the Ill Clan? Will there be a faction like Remnants of the Republic that wants to take revenge? It's funny you should mention that because yes, that is a kind of a a big part of Trial of Bloodright. Uh, yep. What? 
Birthright. Birthright. Not the light. Birthright. I'll get your title right one of these days, Mike. Um, Trial of Birthright. Uh, so, yes, we, it, it is a very terra centric novel, and you'll find out what's been going on there. Yeah, just don't let, anybody, don't let anybody kill Mason Dunn. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, you don't know. Okay. <laughs> Things happen. Yes. Uh, I, know, I know where you live. Yes. Uh, Jose Suarez, question. Anyone writing anything about the Scorpion Empire? We did have a story that was supposed to be, I think it was from one of the Krisky cons. There's a story, I think it. Jose, I think it went into a shrapnel issue, and I don't remember exactly where. We published it about the Scorpion Empire. Um, I'm open to that. The Scorpion Empire is kind of an odd little thing sure. that I really like. I think they're very different, and I, yeah. I'd be open to more fiction about that. I'm just not sure. Uh, took the words, oh, okay, two people bought Scorpion Empire. All right, um, I'll talk to Phil. I'll talk well, to that's a people. landslide. I, hey, two is it, like a plan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jeremy Thompson, heck, what also happened to all the rest of the military hardware and personnel in addition to the Republic's Knights? Well, a lot of it was destroyed because the Battle for Terra laid waste to whole swaths of things. Right. So, but we'll answer a lot of those questions in Trial of Birthright. <laughs> Takes so little to make authors happy. Just get the he needs to give his cue cards. Uh, he, 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 yeah, write those all out. Exactly. Oh, there's three plus one more. Okay, now we've got like overwhelming. All right, well, that's fiction, obviously. three. So got, three is the total answer. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So let's scrap right. everything and just do do uh, do Dan, Scorpion Empire. Anyway, I'm always open to writing more Scorpion Empire. Well, I guess we'll have to talk about that. I know you've got your own work group you're doing too with silent briefings, right. but we can chat. We can absolutely chat. So yes, apparently there's there's an underserved uh, fan base that wants more Scorpion Empire. So I guess right. we'll talk about that. So yeah. This is, folks, this is how you get things done. You talk to us on chat and say, I want this. We have the whole clan of homeworlds, Scorpion Empire. Um, so I actually want to talk to you. I have a question for you, Mike. Uh, sure. In the 35 plus years, wow. Well, yeah, I know. It's scary. Yeah, now it makes it's, you feel really old. Well, I was, <laughs> you and I both were child geniuses. So, yes, you know, this yes, is, yeah, yes. it helped. Is there anything, I'll talk, not about future stuff. Right. Is there anything you felt that you wanted to do in the past? that you either wanted to do or you felt was a missed opportunity in the Battletech universe? Well, you know, originally, uh, Natural Selection was supposed to be the Red Corsair novel. Right, right. But so, then I think, so, was it Barnes and... Uh, well, uh, no, it was uh, no, it was uh, Rock. Rock right. did not yeah, want to do any flashback yeah. things. Yeah, uh, they were all about moving forward. They were all about moving forward. Now. So so, so there we is... get to do it now. So we get to do it now. I'm ecstatic about it. Yep, so, yep, okay. yep. All yep. right, was there anything else that you don't even, that's not even on the table that just, that you can think of? Maybe, no, you know. The, maybe uh, it was too outlandish or you know, direction that you like, oh, I thought it would be great, and it got shot down. I'm just, just out of curiosity. No, no, the, the you know, the nice thing about being on the team that's, that's determining where the universe is going to go is yeah. you're shaping the kind of stories that you want to write. Right. And being in the room, you get to say, and those are mine. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Twilight, Twilight of the Clans, you know, it was like, you know, we've got, what, eight novels, I think it was. And it was like, yep, and I'll take that one and I'll take that one. Thank you. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Oh, Doc Swift. Is, Doc, yes, Doc, I think, wrote the other Scorpion Empire. Huh. And Jose actually has a shrapnel entry for Scorpion Empire. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and Mike is correct. If you wanted that badly, go write it. And yeah. that's true. And who knows? Maybe you'll be in the pages someday. Uh, let's see. For streaming big Shane Lane Isles fiction? I'm sorry. I Do you know what that is? I don't. I'm not even aware of that. No. All right. Well, Jeremy, there you go. There's there's your setting. Uh, let's see. A88 miles per hour. I'm trying to write the tale of a house about the entire timeline of Battletech. Wow. Would there be any interest in a novel short story series like that? Um, I mean, we do have the minor houses. We we did right. start with House of Rana, which was right. tied into the game. Right. It's not outside the realm of possibility. Look, um, you know, something it, like that would have to be approached with care. Here's here's the situation when working in any tie-in universe. Yes. Yes. The the editorial. You have. I mean, the editorial staff has got to know that you can write. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 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 we all, I think, any of us who are readers, we all think, oh, this would be a cool story in that setting. Right. But if you don't have the experience enough to put together an absolutely functional story yeah. on your own, you're not going to have the, you, you lack the skills to be able to do this in someone's tie in universe. Right. Now, I think Shrapnel and doing shorter fiction is an excellent opportunity for you to cut your teeth in the universe, for you to learn about writing and to actually get paid for it and published. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and so. If if I wanted to do stuff with a minor house, 
What I, I mean, look, death kangaroos are exactly the same sort of thing. Yes. Start off small stories, get to know the characters, mm -hmm. build them, and then you get to build them out and expand them a little bit further. And that's, right. that's you know, it's, it's getting the camel's nose in the tent. You know, <laughs> the camel's in the tent, but, yes. you know, you start that way. Yeah. And, and, and John, uh, I've worked with John forever and ever and ever. Yes. Um, <laughs> sharp editor uh, and, and a good judge of talent such that if you are able to deliver on a timely basis, if you're not, I'll tell everybody out there, you want to kill your writing career, be a prima donna that complains about editing. Okay. Be, make yourself, make yourself a thorn in the side of your editors. A great way to have a career that extends forever. Um, you know, don't look, you know, this is, this is a place where you're going to be learning to craft really, really good stories. John is great at, at spotting what needs to be done, how to pull these things together. Uh, so avail yourself of that opportunity. Start small and work to big. Don't figure, I want to be yes. there. Yes, um, I strongly you know. recommend starting with short fiction because the thing, and I've written my share of time universe, yep, uh, several yep, novels. Yep. The thing about writing in someone else's universe is that you don't have complete creative control. Exactly. You're working with other characters, and they have to sound like they what they did in previous books. The setting has to match what in previous yep. books, the technology, yep. everything like that. So shrapnel is a great way to cut your teeth. Don't give us your eight hundred thousand word magnum opus because about you know the star spanning, you know book ten book. It, it, that's not gonna work. That's right. Not gonna work. Right. Mostly because a lot of it's already been told before. Yep. And there, there's it's really hard to t find new ways of treading that ground. Yeah. So, uh, but start small and it, it absolutely build up. We do short stories. We do novellas. We do short novels. Yep. We run the gamut and eventually show a willingness to be flexible yep. and work with us and deliver what I need on time. And you could yep. see your name on the. I, a, 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 Battletech novels. I mean, okay. you know, to use the Death Commandos or to use the Death Kangaroos as an example, uh, you know, I've, uh, John's got two of the stories. He knows that I got outlines for half a dozen more. Yep. Uh, and that there's a story arc where we will be bringing them more tightly into stuff. But yes. it's a great, it's a gradual build. Uh, and the key thing is to have stories that are fun. Right. And, and, are battle tech and stories, and huge not just stories. Universe. Yes, yep, exactly. exactly. So there's a great question by CR. What is your position on alternate timeline battle tech fiction that explores roads not taken? We, so literally, it's like you're in my brain. We were literally discussing this over the past weekend, and it's something we'd obviously have to approach with a lot of caution. But I would be really interested in doing a kind of what if. Oh yeah, yeah. Like an anthology. Yep. Um, it, it would not sustain a novel. But... I've got a story about the Calhouns as a punk rock band, you know, and just saying, I just, you know, battle max with big medical, George, uh, from, uh, from Mad Max. There's, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, George it's, it's, Miller. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. That's it, it, that writes itself. it does. It really does. It's, yeah. it's the next yeah. logical step. Yeah. So it's a possibility. We have to wrap up some anthology projects. I, I have but look, to, I have Sierra Vella, Brian Young and Sierra Vella are already writing their rock rock mercenary there novels. So yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think you've claimed that now. Miguel Hounds rock out. After right. Yeah, but but yeah. come on, they're going to follow on whatever I'm doing yes, anyway. Yes, so yes, it's yes, going to yes. be a whole universe. So you know, the, yeah. I'm going to say definite maybe on that. I always thought it'd be fascinating. You know, what if uh, Amaris never came to power? What if uh, uh, Rich was Richard? No, Simon. What if Sam yeah, yeah, never yeah. died? Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, what if what if we're 400 years later? How is what is House Cameron up to? It changes yeah. everything. Yeah, what if Alexander Kerensky? What, what if Alexander said, "Oh no, children, stop now." You know, right. You know. Right. Yeah. What if he never left? I mean, yep, there's so yep, many yep. inflection points. Yeah. That take the inner sphere on a completely different trajectory. Yep. That yeah. I think tales writing a just just a collection. Oh sure. Of sure. that would be fascinating. It would be. So it would be. it's something I have to approach, like I said, with great care. But uh, it's it's possible. It's possible. Yes. Uh, let's see, Madcat three five two. Where can I find the Death Kangaroo stories? Um, well, the first one was given to all the backers of the Mercenaries Kickstarter. So if right. you're a backer, you should have it. Mike has already written a very expansive sequel that I have to get through editorial. So we can have it at Gen Con. Uh, yes, yes, that yes, is yes, that yes, is yes, the yes. tender plan, which I think is doable. I think it's doable. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um. So and there's you've got. I, you told me ideas for six, seven more. Yep, yep, yep. It's yep, going to yep. be a whole series. So yep, yeah, I yep. told him keep writing them. As soon as he turns them in, I'll I'll put them out. So yeah, I'm yep. looking forward to the collection. Um, I actually I think I might be able to release yours now. What's that? Uh, the first one I should put out. Night oh yeah. Lake, uh, yeah. With yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe a bit of a new cover. 
Yeah, well, it's, do that to differ, differentiate itself because it's just. But it's really really, it's only about eight thousand words, I think. I've done short fiction by itself before. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, all right. So, yeah, yo, I, that would I, be I cool. Want, I want. I mean, it went to twenty four thousand people, but there's probably a few that still haven't read it yet. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. Get it out there. So, sure, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, the Kel the Kelhounds colon rock out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh and yeah, I need need the flame guitars for the Death Kangaroos Death Metal Band. Man, oh, absolutely. Oh, so, oh yeah. I don't think it's got to be where they go undercover as a rock band. Oh, are you kidding? For oh, now, you know, right now the next Death Kangaroos story. Uh, Coral is going to be playing with some musical instrument. Oh, we're just gonna we're gonna foreshadow this thing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Craig, talk about the influx of AI stories that have in, have infected the market. Uh, that's more of a Phil. You know, we're gonna have Phil on a fiction panel, and we will talk about that. I don't think we've seen a lot of that because BattleTech is such a specialized universe. You yeah. can't just throw prompts and get in a BattleTech story. Right. right. It is a concern of ours. Because eventually, I think it will get to that point that people are going to try to I, slush, I, flood, I, flood the slush. They they may do that. Here's the thing that I see with AI stories and stuff like that. AI cannot have a bad day. Yeah. It cannot have an emotionally positive day, right. or emotionally negative day. And it can't have the little serendipitous things that happen in life that we writers use to fuel stories. Right, right, very and, true. Very and true. and as a result, these stories may uh, using an AI to write a a a battle scene, yeah. that's great. But using AI to write the re emotional reactions unless they're pulling those wholesale out of a previous book and slamming them straight in, which is illegal. And uh also going to have the dissonance too because it's not going to fit. Right. You right. can't you unless you're someone has to match that AI yeah. does yep. not have the capability to do that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but it, it's a concern. I know several magazines have had to close their submissions because they just get inundated with right. To be honest, crap AI crap. But, but you can at least for me, I I can tell it when I see it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, real yeah. easy to pick out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, let's see. We have a couple of questions. Let, let's touch base on this. All right. A couple of questions about Den of Wolves. Uh, okay. From the founding of the clan. Uh, yes, uh, because Lauren has been here, we've been talking about that amongst right. the three of us. Right. And right, we right. have a plan moving forward, so we're hoping yeah. to get that back on track. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, and events that and happened that have kind of. I, I will. I will take the hit on the delay about that. You know, with with oh, things like COVID. Uh, you know, my mom dying. Yeah. Uh, you know, other other little things just kind of get in the way. Yeah. But yeah. but I schedules the ability to move forward. You know, yes. it, finally, Absolutely. we're we're where we can do that. Yeah, so um, I'm really hoping to get that out to the backers this year yeah. and then publish for the wider audience as well. So, yeah, uh, let's see. Um, Mike Whitaker, talk about fitting stories inside big existing canon. That's a good one. Sure. Do you find it a struggle to hook things in, or do you get moments where story strands hook up with a satisfying, unexpected clunk and like, oh, I can't believe that just happened? I'm, um, I'm going to toss that question right to you because that's a really good question. Yeah, well, this goes back to what we're talking about with with AI and serendipity and and you know being able to recognize it. There are times when you'll be researching a. I, we were talking about earlier with with uh, um, Warrior Repost uh, for the Morgan scene, the first Morgan scene. I was just looking for an out of the way world, right? You know, right. and. It turned out, you know, it was a desert planet. That's great. And that was enough to spark that whole opening scene for me. Yeah. So so sometimes you're just lucky. And, and yes, that is absolutely glorious. And then there are other times that, like, uh, uh, in, in the Death Kangaroos stuff, Brian has been working on Galatea. He created a cathedral there. I was able to pull that over. We, we decided St. Michael's is the mercenary cathedral. Uh, oh, you know, God. and you so just got the St. Michael's reference. Yeah, well, the, well, <laughs> but but St. Michael is also the patron saint of mercenaries oh, in the well, in the Catholic well, mythology. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you nice, know, nice, very nice. But we're able to work those things, you know, tossing them yeah. back and forth, and 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 that really ties the universe together, and 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 I think creates warm fuzzies for the readers as well, right? Because they recognize right. out of this story, going, I wonder, is that the same? I guess it is. Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, so. exactly. Uh, and you mentioned, yes, Brendan. Oh, any? I apologize, everyone, but we're trying to break into the stream. Right. The truth uh, will be coming to all of you very soon. We have two special correspondents coming, and the, all of the mistruths and lies will be washed away. 
Join us in 10 minutes when this begins. Thing. Yep, yep, I'm very yep, excited yep, yep, um, yep. to get a new novel by Michael, so that's the plan. Yep. Got some little things to iron out contractually, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, we're almost there. There was, let's see, Beasley, okay, great, but she read. Um, let's see, Beasley, like me with you, okay. Uh, so, are we still going? What's that? Are we still going? Let's pretend we are until they tell us we aren't. That sounds good. All right. Uh, let's see. So, still open for questions. That was perhaps the most genuine reaction to a plant interrupt I've ever seen. <laughs> what was that? Uh, welcome, Bungie Bun Bungle Tech. Okay, yeah, that's a great title. Bungle Tech, a Battletech podcast. <laughs> there we uh, go. Thanks just joining us. We are here live at Adepticon 2024. We are in the streaming booth from um, um, uh, Six Sides of Gaming. Yes. Uh, with yeah. uh, with um. I'm blanking on his name now. Tommy. Tommy Goffin and those guys uh, very are doing good. a great very job good. doing our tech. And they everything. are. Uh, I'm sitting here with the esteemed author, Battle Lake author, Michael Stackpole, as I guess we're heading into our second right. hour. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> this is this is sort of like live coverage no, no, when, no, no, no. when something is burning. One of you. We, we're doing this right now. So yeah, yes. I know. <laughs> yeah, you, you can run, but you can't hide, sir. <laughs> no, anyways, I'm sitting here with Michael Stackpole talking about the history of Battletech. He has been around since the very beginning, the very first novels. He has been instrumental in... The clan invasion events uh, and just right. kind of basically creating the universe that we all know and love and play in for 40 years, which is unreal. Okay, that leads me to a great question I just thought of. When you first started this, when you first finished Warrior On Guard, right. did you ever, 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 ever in your wildest imagination think you would be sitting here talking about these same books 40 years later? Uh, No, no, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I knew, uh, I was very thankful for the... The start that FASA gave me. Yeah. And yeah. I knew as long as FASA came back and asked, I would do something. You know, I, yeah. I would constantly be happy to do something for uh, 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 for the property, for Battletech, just yeah. for the love of it and having devoted so much time to it. Okay. But did I ever think that it would be here and it would be this big and, and seeing this resurgence? Did I ever think that there would be plushies? Oh my God! Right. No, well, one, right. there was no word as plushies back then. It was no, stuffed no. animals. No, it's a whole new but, industry. Yeah, exactly. But to, and and for me to see that with with you know the the Kellhounds or Death Kangaroos logo on it and stuff. Right. It's just it's stunning and wonderful. Yeah, we, so. we have these fantastic ceramic mugs. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Emblem logos of clans and great yep. I never thought we'd have that. No, I I agree. Okay. I agree. Uh, let's see. J Jag Green Lem, is this the actual Michael Stackpole, or did Rom just replace both of you with body doubles? Well, let me let me talk to Tom Stark. Just for a moment, I, I need to get the right answer. So that's a great comment. That's Thank true. You. That is true. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kai Conshock, and I'm apologies if I didn't got that name right. Uh, oh, turn, someone says turn the volume up. Apparently, there's a comment. Turn the volume up. Put yeah, a screen, a yeah. schedule on screen. Oh, schedule on screen versus breaks, Michael, please, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, from Kai Contract. Again, apologies if we get that name wrong. One, what is the next step in the ill clan era? All right. Uh, two, will we ever see a TCG with organized play? Wow. You're, and three, no battle movie. Okay, what about Shadowrun? Wow, you're asking the big questions. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're doing a panel with uh, Ray later on talking about the ill clan era next step. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to punt that one. Okay. Uh, two, will we ever see a TCG with organized play? I can neither confirm nor deny that at this time. Three, no battle movie. Okay, what about Shadowrun? Um, the media rights for both properties, that is a whole other topic of a panel that would take an hour to describe. The short answer is as much as we would love, 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 love to do either one of them, it, that because of the complicated rights issue, it seems that is impossible unless there's a major change. And that's all I can really say about that. Yeah. I would die to see Battletech on the big screen or the small screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I actually think yeah, it lets yep. itself to television better than a yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the complicated rights situation, it just seems like that's a, a mountain that we can't climb. So um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Bungle Tech asked question for you. Do you ever put intentional conscious effort to not connect things i personally find it is human nature to find, try to find connection in things 
but uh, sometimes things just exist alone. Uh, right. Michael, what do you think about that? Uh, no, we have in the past uh, at developer meetings and stuff like that very vehemently and definitively said, no, there is no connection here. We will not. And, and from a, 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 a creative point of view, the reason for that is this. There are some things that all the fans have already figured out right. in their own mind, and they've got their head cannon and, yes, for yes, what this indeed. is. They've connected the dots that are never beneficially connected. Right. If we connect those same dots, we're not adding anything to their experience of the universe because mm, they've yeah, already got yeah, in their heads. Yeah. Okay. So our job is to give them stuff which is new, entertaining, surprising, shocking, and, and get them thinking about – what those implications are. Yes, so. yes, exactly, exactly. Oh, uh, Rogue Dex, can't wait for the uh, Mex and Men Stackpole interview. I guess they've formed in. <laughs> uh, yes, we had dinner with the wonderful guy we who did. did the Mex and Men podcast and talked at length about yep. having Michael on, having Brian Young, myself, I need to make an right, appearance as right. well. We are very excited about them. They're a great bunch of guys. You should guys, you should all check out their podcast. Absolutely. And the great thing, which I'm I'm very uh, tickled about, they're doing deep dives on the Battletech novels. They are all about the fiction, which they, I they just really find are. incredible. It's absolutely yep. incredible. So, yes, yep. go check out yep. of Mex and Men's yep. podcast. And, uh, okay, folks, that is going to bring us to a close. Michael, thank good. you so oh, much for being with us. My pleasure, John, Again, always. There is a live signing with Michael Stackpole, Brian Young, Rusty Zimmerman, Phil Lee, and any other authors of uh, Brando Bills at 3 p.m. on site at Adepticon. Right. Uh, from all of us at Adepticon and Catalyst Game Labs, over to you. We want to say thank you for watching, thank you for playing, and above all, thank you for reading. Thanks very much.
Good afternoon, fans. My name is... It should not be shared. My identity must remain secret for our purposes. But we are broadcasting live from Adepticon. I know you are looking forward to seeing Michael Ciravella and Ray Arastia talking to you about lunchtime secrets, all of the secrets of the Battletech universe, giving you the opportunity to give us questions and see what might be happening. Unfortunately, we had to break in to tell you the truth of the Battletech universe. This is your hard-hitting reporting. This is your opportunity to get your inside scoop on the world. We will no longer allow the deceptions to move forward, such as... Roy, it is a pleasure to see you here. Thank you for joining me. I know the danger you must be in. Always. <laughs> always danger, always pleasure. Absolutely. So, I know you actually know Ray Arastia personally. Is he truly the hero and great among men that we have all heard? No, he's a bit of a dick. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe that. I've seen the statues. There should be more Just, statues. This, <laughs> is, this, great. this is great. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe any of the lies right there. That is wonderful. Oh, we are we are getting signals that potentially the the, uh, the our safety me measures may have started to fail here. They may be seeing exactly who we're looking at. Oh no, we're we're gonna have to go forward. We're gonna have to check this for ourselves potentially. But while you're doing that, any of the questions that you would have had for Ray or for Michael, please put up on the screen right here. The theory of this wonderful time is sometimes the interviews don't get the hard-hitting aspects. Please let us know what you'd like to know. We will give you the behind-the-scenes look as far as we can. Some things must remain secret. But that is the uh, wonderful thing. We are going to start from the very beginning right here. If you had to ask... Oh, we've already got our first question. What evil forces are keeping the Urban Mech 2C out of plastic? Um, I think it's uh, it's General Motors out of Cathil. Yeah. Potentially, we would would we see such a unit in existence? It is possible. Never say never. Are there any units that uh, you, with your in-depth knowledge of Ray, actually would potentially never see in plastic? Never see in plastic? Unlikely to see in plastic. Never say never. When it comes to Catalyst, you can never say never. Hmm. Some of the larger vehicles, some of the larger support vehicles, yeah. Okay. Would be is real that, long is that a technical, is that a production aspect, or is it just... More it, of a demand. Gotcha. Demand. Uh, okay, now now they're coming hot and heavy here, right here. Uh, when will we get the Omega in plastic? Or is that the same theory of you've got a baseball? Um, if we start to rev uh, visit the Jihad again, we already announced that we have um, the um, Celestials, a pack of Celestials coming up, and we'll see how they do. And how do you feel? That's a good question before we dive into you. How do you feel about the Celestial line? That was a very interesting one for our purposes. Um, I I think they're really, really cool. They're essential to the uh, Jihad era gaming, and uh, it'll be really cool when we have those out again. Absolutely. And hopefully we will be talking a little bit more about the Jihad era and Jihad era fiction tomorrow at the same time when we hope to bring you the truth in our fiction seminar. But coming back, uh, what mech from the Jihad do you want out that isn't out or planned? Light Ray comes to mind. I'd have to I'd have to go through the list and pick out my favorites, but light light ray is one of the ones that definitely comes out to find. And um, the name is escaping me. The one on the cover of uh, thirty thirty, I think it's fifty eight. Um, upgrade. Yes, I have to get back to you. Fair enough. All right. So I already reverse engineered the Irby Lamb using the Alpha Strike cards. Why not just give it an official classic record sheet? We'll see. We'll see. Good answer. Where is Arthur Steiner Davian? He is in the deep periphery with um, all the remnant Manny Domine. Fair enough. I want this one before it pops off the top of the screen. The Ambassador Mech. Is it canon? I've always wondered. 15 tons, slightly bigger than a proto-mech, no weapons. 
I don't no, remember. I, I, I to, remember seeing that at some point, but I'm not familiar with that at all. Any chance of a plastic Grand Crusader? Uh, not anytime soon. But yeah. Will we get more aerospace minions? That depends on a number of factors, but I would love that. Uh, we do love our aerospace. Uh, four of flake lambs to go with the Celestials. There were some pretty ones, to be fair. They are lower on the list than the classic lambs. <laughs> Legitimately excited for rumors of Ares in plastic, but being able to use the metal Ares as a bludgeon is a plus. That is fair. Uh... April Fool's Battletech and Leviathan's crossover manual. That's a good idea. Ooh, somebody's starting to trying to stick pick a fight here. Who is the coolest Battletech staffer? I think I'm sitting next to him. Not that I'm saying that I'm sitting next to anyone in particular. Well, you know, I, I could answer that, but I'm not going to. Wisdom. Great wisdom. Because I have to work with all of them. That is very fair. But all of each and every one of that team is absolutely magnificent. We have a great team working on Battletech today, and uh, I'm really proud to be a part of that team. Ooh, speaking of plastic, any chance we'll see some periphery designs like the Pensalea? I hope I said that right. Uh, not anytime soon, but of course we would love to get to them. This is a good one because I actually missed it the other day. What Capellan representation in plastic can we look forward to and when? The soonest one to look for is the McCarran's Armored Cavalry pack, uh, mercenary pack. They will have uh, Capellan designs in there. I believe also that we see one of the Mac uh, uh, commanders, one of the McCarran's in the Devastator in the legendary pack. Am correct. I correct. That's right. Excellent. All right, we have an air Aaron K. Hall. Sorry, all what I miss. What are the secrets? I, I, what, what did we, what would we, uh, well, the biggest the secret I could reveal is that Aaron K. Hall is actually the guy that runs the line. Ah, I see. He just sends me to conventions. <laughs> the, the face and the, and the voice of Battletech, absolutely. So, does that mean he's working on the new Universe 2 book, Electric Boogaloo? Yes. Ah, I see. All right. Will we ever see a barrel tech space combat game in the Alpha Strike style? You gave us record sheets, but no rules. Can we change it? Well, we have the rules for that, that they were published in the uh, Alpha Strike Companion. But uh, we didn't really see a need to reprint them in the Commander's Edition. Um, we're hoping at some point to repackage those rules and release them as a PDF. Sounds good. What are our plans for the next Kickstarter? I, I There's know. several plans. Uh, none are solidified. There is no next Kickstarter being worked on right now, just several things being worked on. And um, next Kickstarter might not be a miniature Kickstarter the way the last two were. Um, there's all sorts of possibilities. Uh, any chance, all these are connected. Uh, heavy crab based mech or uh, a four crab mech pack. Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, we might need to take some of these out of order right here. Uh, from David Kerber, update on cloning deck. Uh, no such luck. There's a long line of people to clone. The sheer amount of tests that we're going to have to run on the original. We'll have to, uh, look into that. Uh, where can we get the reunification packages if you can't make it to a convention? That is unfortunately a Randall question, but we will pass that one along. Any chance of official art for the Scorpion Empire's Rhino considering a con pilot swan? We don't really have a place in the near future to to drop that artwork. Who caused Grey Monday? I don't know if we've ever sent it out to the world officially. Well, we haven't nailed it down yet. Fair. But uh, there are several contenders... And it's just when it will become interesting for the story to finally reveal that. Excellent. Excellent. So we know, but we're not telling you. Uh, all right. Will there ever be a plastic model at which you can change the configuration quasi an omni plastic model? No plans right now, but I've been pushing for that. I think that would be really, really cool. 
Hot take. The Marauder is a cousin to the crabs, but isn't in the family. Fair. Okay. Uh, that question is a distinction without a distance difference, Bungle Tech. Nice try. Uh, <clears throat> next scale Rattler Lamb that transforms into a dropship when? That's a really good example of the type of thing that we will not make. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. When will you make a new member of the Marauder family? We've got the Night Star. We've uh -huh. got the Marauder. That's Dragon really Fire. Cool um, I don't see anything coming, at least uh, not until we actually get all of those into plastic, the existing ones. Gotcha. Any chance we'll get more canon TONEs like the ones from the old Twilight of Clan scenario books? Not very likely. The closest that we do are uh, company or battalion size in the um, Spotlight on PDF series. Gotcha. Uh, Maelstrom Art rework? I think that's on the list. Nice, nice. Okay, where will the Euro Hub be? I don't think we've got that answer for you yet. No. <laughs> that is a lower question. Wants a redo of the imp. Uh, no, it's been requested several times, and it's come close. It's been cut off from the list twice. Yeah. Uh, this was a uh, adjustment from the earlier question. Potentially a battle space uh, aerospace file fighter style Alpha Strike. I think they're looking for if it will be like an Alpha Strike game of battle space with the plastic fighters. If we were to do something like that, it would be much farther down the line where we have a new core um, aerospace game. True. Once we lead with that, we could always do, we could revisit um, aerospace and, and uh, capital uh, battles in Alpha Strike. Nice. Any chance for the Solaris original mechs? Great Turtle, Aqua Gladius, the like. Any chance? Yes. But they're um, nowhere on the list at the moment. Uh, I'm going to assume that's similar for industrial mechs? Yep, we'd love to do a pack of industrial mechs. But it's not any time in this near future. It's all about the priorities on the mechs, absolutely. What about mech-scale dropship carrying cases? Maybe with lights and sound buttons? Um, sounds cool. I wouldn't want to carry one around, though. Is the Matador on the list for eventual plastic? Uh, not in the near future. And the same goes for... No, someone asked about the Grey Death Standard Battle Arbor. I think they are on the list a few years out. Nice. All right, I like this one. What is your favorite Battletech product that has been released this year? This year so far, yeah. um, if we say will be released, it's got to be the Battletech universe. If it's right now, the this is what we have, the um, Recognition Guide Volume 2, which collects uh, the Recognition Guide PDF releases. It has all the brand new Ilclan era mechs and all the upgrades to uh, past battle mechs and vehicles, such as we've got all the... Clan Omni's in here. We have, you know, classic vehicles and new vehicles. Sorry, I'm not. I have no idea how this is looking. And Inner Sphere and Clan Second Line upgrades, as well as uh, battle armor. All right, but that is actually a great point, though. For if you've already gotten your printed copy, we already have a secret for you. Look to see what's on page six. The greatest secrets are on page six. All right, then. Uh, any plans for a new RPG complaints for a time of war and destiny? Um, not soon. We have something of the worst, but not not soon. Nothing we can talk about yet. A few of those questions are flying past, so if we miss yours, I do apologize. Uh, will we ever get a Capellan mech with a Dao sword? I think so. I think so. Uh, 
Whose idea was it to get the Kaga battle armor on the schedule? I would like to buy them a drink. It was a, a group effort, but... Drinks for everybody. Yeah. I support it. Animated Battletech shows, question mark? I would love to see it. Uh, will there be an official system that bridges CBT and Alpha Strike, like the one from Death From Above Gaming? Some people find CBT too slow and AS too light. So a third system? Uh, can't say it this time, really. No. The porridge is either hot, too hot, or too cold, folks. Uh, plans for getting a full series of the Mad Cat family in plastic. I love the Battletech Legends look of the Savage Wolf and would love an updated model. We're we're working on it. Uh, is it me or is the audio cutting out? Uh, it may be either way. It also may be. I do apologize. My voice started going the other day. It is much improved for everyone who heard me yesterday, but it may be cutting in and out slightly. So I do apologize. Can I hope for uh, can I hope for more iconic mechs, battle armor, tanks for the faction of BattleTech, Samurais for Greta, Bear mechs for Ghost Pair, and so on? Little by little, yes. Is there a chance to see the Atlas Three in a few years in plastic? Um, I would like to see that, yes, but it's not in any of the um, next couple years. All right, uh, reprint of the Alpha Strike Commander's Edition this year or next year? Should be this year. This year. Very mm -hmm. nice. Is there any update on the Battletech graphic novels? Yes. I think John wanted to talk about it um, later on the show. I think we, we shall. Wonderful. More of the truth coming out. Do you have a plan to update older map sheets from pre-Catalyst times, trying to collect them all? Uh, yes, but not in the format that they were previously published. So what I mean by that is in nearly every set of maps that we've done, the new maps, we've taken some of the older ones and um, re-illustrated them. Um, trying to keep the same old names, but in a few cases, the names have changed, even though it's the same map layout. So we're doing that little by little, but uh, they won't be collected the way they were before. Map set one, map set two, three. They're just going into our newer sets. Very nice. Very nice. Um... Will Lauren ever stop to put Capella, stop putting Capella over the other houses? No. No no way to know. <laughs> Ray is probably closer than I am. Ever likely to see a Timberwolf A in plastic? It's really it's, tough to do all of those. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. It's That's definitely true. a possibility. Any chance of seeing Dark Age Ill Clan models? Yes. Those are on the list. And this one's the one that popped up a few times. When is the SLDF Force Pack coming out? Potentially what month? I know we've been, uh, that's been a shipping item as of late. Yeah, it's it's done, it's produced, um, it's held up in shipping right now. I can't, I can't say what month. It was planned to be within the third, uh, sorry, within the first quarter. We're still just within the first quarter. Um, all I can say is soon. Soon. Have you ever thought of Omnimech packages where you can choose the variant you play, like the jump option? I don't think... What goes into that sort of situation? I know how difficult it is just for the regular uh, sculpt with uh, Scroggins and his team creating each and every one of them mm -hmm. right there. I can only imagine the nightmare that that would be to try to do all these various interlocking pieces at that point. Um, it's more of a production issue than a um, a design and sculpting issue. And we would love to do that. Um, we've been experimenting with uh, a couple of the packs coming out in the Kickstarter. And moving forward, we try to push more and more to give that sort of uh, sort of options within the packs. But um, what uh, what you're asking for, which I would love to see, there's nothing in the near future for that. But we keep we keep pushing the boundaries. Will the Jupiter Mac be in plastic soon? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, can we hope that the new novels may be translated in other languages? I believe that's a John Helfer's question. I yeah. believe he'll have one for tomorrow. Uh, Blood Spirit, new sculpts? Um, I know Randall wants them. 
But uh, again, that's low priority. Can you thank Randall from the German fan for finally finishing the Clan Founder trilogy? He started in the early 2000s. Right. Well, Unfortunately, we cannot. The Randall Bills that is here at Adepticon is a clone. Uh, we've kind of misplaced the original. We believe he's somewhere between here and uh, the West Coast, probably on a highway somewhere. But you can get a patch from literally anyone who shake their hands. Will we ever see a mech scale dropship? Yes. Can you talk more about the revamped Mercenary Handbook coming? I like that question. Ooh. Um, um, well, it, it, it's a callback to the very first one. So what this will be is a book about how to create narrative campaigns. Um, so it's more than just... Uh, building a mercenary group and running the mercenary group, it takes that core model of rules and fleshes it out so you could make your own house unit, clan unit, mercenary, pirate, and so on, um, and create and run campaigns with the same core system. You know, depending on what uh, sort of campaign you're playing, it'll have different added flavor to it. So you'd be able to do the mercenary campaign with... Um, contracts and um that sort of thing very nice very nice <clears throat> you will be offering the two aerospace salvage boxes for sale again outside of kickstarter add-ons do not have the definitive answer but based on the prior one i would say it's very likely yes would you guys consider an RPG adventure submission system like ffg had for genesis where you can submit adventures for approval to a community market it's something that's been discussed. Uh, any timeline on the novels translated from German to English? I know that's a John, that's John, a John, John Helfer's question. question. Uh, where are we in the near future on Protomex? Not sure I understand the question, but Protomex, Protomex are relegated to just a couple factions that use them now and mostly relegated to the... Um, end of the clan invasion era and the jihad era so we're not going to be seeing a battle strike alpha strike box set protomex next week correct find it now in your local barnes and noble are there any new german publishers for battle tech in the foreseeable time we will send that over to john helfers tune in tomorrow uh we got mechs that originated in Mech Warrior 4 or Mech Commander in CBT. Will we get Mech Warrior 5 or Battletech exclusives as well in the HBS version? Um, no. That could change, but no. Would you ever consider a box set based on voting by fans, or is that an insane nightmare to think about? An insane nightmare to think about. <laughs> If it could be structured the right way, yes. I would, you know, instead of a vote, it would be a pre-order, right? And highest uh, pre-order amount wins. Because um, we, we've we seen in the past that any sort of internet polls, whether official, semi-official, or otherwise, don't necessarily reflect sales. So it's not necessarily a nightmare to organize. It's just not the right way to do it. That is very fair. Thank you. Uh, can we expect more premium miniatures? Maybe one for each faction? Uh, yes, and possibly yes. Campaign books for Ill Clan are in the progress to bring the era more forward? Yes, that's correct. The Merc handbook covering all eras, I assume. Um, correct. It'll be era agnostic with um, uh, optional information there to, to run things in specific eras. Okay, it's time to make sure you all get enough food, water, and rest. Do not want someone dropping on the convention floor. We can certainly try. That is a wonderful thing for our purposes. Uh, can we make the rock cannon? Thank you. Thank you. The secret code did come through. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about that rock question. The Rock Protomech is all is canon already, right? Yeah, and I'm wondering if you're asking about something else. 
the Rakshasa in plastic. I didn't want to choke on that question. Um, I'd like to see it. Um, won't happen anytime soon, though. Will we be getting other CBT legends like Victor Steiner Davy and Daniel Allard from the uh, novels as minis and mech warrior cards? Um, yes, we're always trying to do that. Victor, in fact, we have a card for him. And I could swear that we did Dan Allard with the Wolfhound. But the answer is yes. Nice, nice. All right, folks. Well, all right, we've got quite the list of various mechs in plastic. Uh, the, we may want to switch over to some more thematic stuff. You've got this wonderful gentleman right here. I think they're all figured out that it's Ray Arostia, but at that same point, I didn't say so. But please, you've got the line developer here. We can get the in-depth questions and the burning questions filled. Any chance for more Solaris stuff? Yes. Yep. Excellent. All right, Ray. While while we're waiting on this for a quick second, yep. can you tell us a little bit more about the universe book? I know you've been talking about it for days, but I also know that it has quite a bit of uh, reason to talk and be excited about this. The universe book is a primer for the BattleTech universe, um, especially for people that aren't familiar with it. It gives them a really decent overview of what the universe is about. Uh, it's history from, you know, current day to where we wind up in the Ill Clan era in 3152. Um, it gives an overview of the main factions that have either been around for the whole multi-century ride or the factions that are most, um, uh, or, or I should say, new to the current era. And uh, it's... A must, must, I think it's a must-have for any uh, of our current audience just because it encapsulates all of what is Battletech into just a nice coffee table, um, beautifully illustrated book. Excellent. Uh, lore question that you can maybe answer. Does the Wolf's Dragoons have a Kerensky honor name? No. No. Oh. I. Uh, Will we see an updated Solaris box set? No, or at least uh, not any time in the near future. But um, there is no, we've got lots of plans for Solaris, lots of brainstorming, lots of things that we could do. But as far as the idea of just taking the old box and revamping it or revamping those rules, we probably won't go in that direction. Fair. Any word of Blake's stories in the pipeline? Any word of Blake? Yes, we have Jihad Fiction coming out. Um, John Helfer's when he's on again, you could ask him about that. He could talk more about that. But I'm really excited to say that we're going to start publishing uh, Jihad Fiction. Is there any chance of putting out a deck of pilot cards that are not part of a force pack? Um, it's possible. It's something that we've talked about. Figures for Destiny, a time of war, or maybe some kind of deal with Hero Forge so we can make minis with neuro helmets and the cooling vests? It's something that we constantly discuss. It's something that we want. It's just a, a, a question of how we make it happen. Any chance of putting more of a focus on the major periphery factions? I'd love to see more Tori and Calderon love. We will see uh, more for them, more from them. Um, just again, the periphery, the periphery is the periphery. Is the periphery. Yeah, <laughs> very true. <laughs> Does Battle Force tokens in the Kickstarter signal that more Battle Force is coming or planned? No, I would not say more Battle Force is uh, is coming, but we continue to try and support it how we can. <clears throat> how much of license? So I have a license rights nightmare. Is House Arano currently? Zero. Zero. As a matter of fact, they're in the universe book. Will we be getting more GDL novels? Probably. Any updates on the companion app? 
that I I don't have any information on. I'm sorry. I like this one. What is the biggest challenge of your role? Not enough hours in the day. What is your pie in the sky product you would like to put out? I, I, actually, this question comes up a lot, and the issue is that sooner or later, our pie in the sky products get made. True. Um, I, in which case, I would have to say the next thing I would love to see, but it's you know nowhere near even starting. Um, would be a brand new Aerotech game. Excellent. A new Aerotech game would be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh. Uh, are we going to see more official mi- missions or broad competitive or tour- tournament guide rails? Maybe have CGL weigh in on or end the format wars? That is something that's planned for the future. Yep, definitely. Uh, any pre Rasslog Republic in the pipe? Rassel Hague Dominion, yes. Gotcha. Any more love going to the Scorpion Empire's war way in the future, or we had their moment in the sun? We will definitely see more of them, but again, they are a deep per state. <laughs> With the new mechs coming out, will we see more wreck guides going forward? Probably not. Okay. Uh, the wreck guides served a specific purpose, and if... Uh, um, if we have need of the rec guides again, we we may use them, but most likely we'll come up with a new format altogether. Weather planetary condition decks. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Weather or planetary condition decks. Um, I think they would be really neat. I don't know that there's much call for it though. But uh, we did a little bit with um. The initiative initiative deck. Mm-hmm. Randall talked about three D printed building sets. Mm-hmm. Right. There hasn't been much movement there, but yes, we um, we want to do that. What we've been looking for is someone to partner with that could handle the the selling and producing and and shipping of all that. Um, but yeah, we we definitely want to uh, make use of the files we've been generating. What's something you're proud of putting into Battletech or influencing? Um, okay, two-part answer. First, I have really, really tried not to insert anything of mine or anything personal into the Battletech IP. I, I'm, I'm, it's custodian. It's not my personal playground it belongs to all of us so i've tried really hard to not um personally influence it in any way um but if i could answer that more broadly i'm really proud of the work i've done over the past couple years to kind of um keep the storyline moving and sort of shepherd everybody into the the new era excellent uh interstellar players four book plan yes if you had to place yourself into the Battletech universe, where would you be? When would it be? And what would you do? Well, I would probably uh, choose to do something within my existing field, something within production, something within gaming. I choose one of the uh, Golden Five in the Federated Suns, and I would pick a real nice safe area so later succession wars i think it's i think it's good i would not be a mech warrior i would not go out to war i would not uh no thank you a very accurate good question right there any plans for the new smoke jaguars yes oh some people want to pick fights is there a job you wish you could create at CGL but haven't been able to justify it? Uh, sure, sure. There's plenty, and it's not um, it's not necessarily an issue of justifying it. But uh, yeah, the the um, the IP is growing, the company is growing, and uh, we really could use more people in um, 
in other capacities, not simply another writer or artist or, or developer, but in other ancillary capacities. Any update on Karen Karen, Canon Character Database? Uh, there is some movement there. I can't really discuss it at this time, but yes. Any thought on ever producing an art of Battletech? Does CGL hold the copyright on the 80s and 90s FASA art? Yes and yes. Has Target asked for a follow-up product to the Essentials box? Uh, I don't know if I can answer that question one way or the other, but uh, to my knowledge, it's done really well, and uh, Target was happy with it. New Bounty Hunter when? Uh, soon. Soon. In fact, um, in, in fact, you have something to do with that as well. I don't know if you have anything to say, but uh, from both of us, yes. New Bounty Hunter soon. Yes, actually, well, the, some of these scenes have already been revealed. The Legends 3 box is actually the uh, Bounty Hunter box mm -hmm. right there, showing several of the new mechs, uh, not necessarily new mechs, but some new mechs and some new uh, characters from uh, the Bounty Hunter over the years, it, up to and including into the Ill Clan era. Also, hopefully we will be seeing some uh, supplemental fiction in that in that realm and uh, potentially even hearing more about the Draconis Combine moving forward. You'll have to keep watching to find out. Oh, uh, I got a little lost in there. New Black Marauder when? Uh, I know it's being worked on. I I know that there may be three or four more stories before the cycle ends. So I know it's being worked on. Ooh, I like this one. Any chance Pitsune Karina, Victor and Omi's son, and or his two daughters show up in the Ill Clan era? It's possible. Yep. Uh, uh, okay. Who do I contact about an adjustment to my submitted canon character? Uh, you'll have to wait till we uh we do a, a call for that again. For those wanting to recreate the Black Widow Battalion, will there be updates to the Hornet, Falcon, and Imp? Asking for a friend. Not specifically. Okay. Excellent, excellent. All right, folks, we've got about 15 minutes to go. We're still taking questions right here in our Lunchtime Secrets Hour. Once again, I am here with Ray Arastia. Whoops, I said it again. Uh, well, secrecy has never been our uh, high point right here. Uh, that works out pretty well. But we are here live from Adepticon. My name is Michael Suravella. I've got my voice back. Boy, I just can't. I'm not doing this right. Uh, please do not message the campaign regarding canon characters. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. So all of that is good. Um, will we ever find out the fate of the Oregon Reach in the Ill Clan era? Oh. Yes, as a matter of fact. Um, pretty sure that will go into Ill Khan's eyes only. There might be a mention of them. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right. If we have any other questions, folks, pop those up right now. As we said, we've got about 15 minutes left, and then we'll be jumping into the next of our Iridani Light Horse scenarios. Once again, those are connected scenarios. Yesterday, we had a wonderful ELH victory, and that we will be capitalizing on that today as we deal with more battle with the Draconis Combine. Tonight's uh, Today's game has uh, Michael Stackpole, Brian Young, uh, Big Red 40 Tech, and, uh, well, of course, Wonderful art director, Brent Evans. So we'll be seeing that in about 15 minutes. All right, some new, some new questions right there. Uh, will there be a Minnesota Tribe revival? No. A Minnesota Tribe Forest Box? No. Minnesota Tribe Book on Tape? Nope. Lunchbox? Yes, we'll do a lunchbox. You heard it here, folks. Oh, while well, we're waiting for a quick second, though, Ray, mm -hmm. you do such wonderful work. You've got such a magnificent team who does such incredible stuff. You yep. put out the universe book, which we all know nearly killed you right there. Product after product. Randall has shown off the list of all the force packs that are planned out right mm -hmm. there. Number one, when do you sleep? 
And number two, is there anything you want to say to the uh, to the fans out there? Is there anything you want to uh, let them know? Because this is their time to communicate with you. You usually are de- deep down in the dungeon right there, but you're you're out in the sun, and we want to recognize you and appreciate you. Thank you. Um, um, really, all I want to do is uh, I say thank you to all of you out there that that. Uh, follow us and support us and uh, appreciate what we do and um you know just thank you for uh for all that and uh, uh feel free to reach out if there's anything that uh, you do have an issue with or uh any questions you may have or whatever i'm my virtual door is always open and i really like discussing this ip with people you know, universe, the Battletech universe is a big part of my life. Okay, we'll pause for a moment while Aaron K. Hall uh, puts up Do Not Message Ray on the screen. Uh, <laughs> uh, while we're doing that, uh, Ray, why is the Minnesota tribe your favorite, uh, you know, your favorite group? Aaron wants us to know. Well, they're one of the mysteries of Battletech. Battletech has plenty of them, and just like real life, there's plenty of mysteries that we will never be able to get an answer for. And it's just fun speculating. Gotcha. I... Can someone go back to the website recognition guide entries and list in the, each of the guide specific contents and make buying them easier? Huh. Um... Well, I I I don't know about that. Yeah, I agree it would be easier. All I could say for those of you that that do know and are familiar with Sarna, you could find the contents listed on Sarna. But um, um, I don't know about it, if we'd be able to go back and change those on the on the store. Fair, uh, shattered fortress repent. Personally, I don't. I don't think we will reprint that, but that's high on the list for uh, print on demand. In fact, I I was confused. I thought that was one of our first ones that we did print on demand, hmm. but uh, it will be available again in that format, so you'll be able to get a copy. Will we be seeing any more books featuring the Northwind Highlanders? No, no, no. The question is, will we be featuring any books that don't feature the, the Northwind North Highlanders? Highlanders? Yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah, yeah. What mech did Doctor Bonsai pilot? I don't remember, and it's stuck in my head that it's a hatchet man since the hatchet man was one of his creations, but uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, A lot of appreciation for Ray. We appreciate you all. Thank you. Uh, The blood needs some love. Okay. Noted. Uh... Shameless Warrior 13 says the Bonsai Pilot of Phoenix Hawk. Okay. Nice. nice. Thank you. Uh, any chance of a Linden's Battalion rebirth? Unfortunately, no. Uh, it's something that's already come up and discussed, and it's... They were one of the few that were destroyed over Mars by the word of Blake, and we've looked into it. There's no solid way to bring them back and they are definitely missed as they're one of the original core mercenaries um in the setting if you are introducing someone new to battletech with the universe book is there a particular section or feature you would show as something that would wow them yes but that depends on the person um it depends what their interests are and assuming they're your buddy um you might know exactly where to go you might skip to the faction section and, and point out one of the clans to them you know, maybe they have an affinity for wolves, bears. You might um, show them a particular point in history that's pretty cool, and uh, it'll get them to dig in. You go right to the Comstar section if they're very uh, conspiracy-minded. So there are plenty of places. It's, it just depends on who you're showing it to. Uh, as a Monte Diablo veteran, will there be something like it, a worldwide scenario that flows into the lore? Yes, we hope so. Mm-hmm. Uh, any plans on publishing the record sheets on an MUL? Yes, there are plans. Can't tell you when, just something that we want to do. 
Excellent, excellent. All right, folks, we are wrapping up. We are in our final five minutes, so get your final questions in now. Any extra support vehicles you would like to see in plastic? Airships. It'd be pretty neat. <laughs> but again, that's that's kind of what I was pointing to, that it, the larger support vehicles um, is probably the last, last things that you'll ever see from us. But I think it would be very cool. Very nice. Very nice. All right, folks, we are going to wrap up right now. Once again, we would like to thank our wonderful guest, Ray Rostia, line developer for Battletech, for taking the time right here and pulling through the secrets so you can come to the truth right there. And a quick shout out to Aaron K. Hall, the, uh, my assistant line developer, who's been on the chat with us, sort of helping wrangle things. Thank always, you, Aaron. Always providing support and always there for you, Ray. You have no more devoted protector, supporter, or anything else than dear Aaron. And we do appreciate you for that. All right. Uh, will you ever redeem the only clan that followed Kerensky with honor, the Jade Falcons? <laughs> nice. I would say check out the Sudeten Falcons. Mm -hmm. And this one came up yesterday, so we do want to uh, get that one before we jump out. How about a force black from Shrapnel for Shrapnel next? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. On that wonderful note, we're going to uh, wrap up right here, and you can come back in about five minutes to see our next game, which is ELH uh, uh, round two. Just for the record, the schedule was a little difficult. Tomorrow, This will be a two-hour session coming in, uh, not one hour. So if you'd like to watch and stay, uh, stay tuned, we've got some other fun, exciting stuff tonight. And the uh, schedule keeps shifting a bit. Lots of new surprises and good things, but we're hoping today looks nice and steady. Stick around. You've got a lot of great stuff. We appreciate you, and live from Adepticon, have a great day.
My name is Michael Tirabella, and I'm coming live from Adepticon in Thornburg, Illinois. We are now back. For everyone who was with us yesterday, we were doing the uh, fun series of, cam of connected campaigns uh, involving the Iridani Light Horse and the Draconis Combine. Uh, last yesterday, we were wondering if we were happy to see a decisive uh, Iridani Light Horse victory. And we are back today for the second mission. Once yeah. again, all of these interconnected scenarios can go either way. We were not expecting to do this scenario yesterday. And who knows which one we will see tomorrow. But we've got a star-studded cast here. Uh, supporting the Iridani Light Horse is the Grandmaster of all Battletech writing, Michael Stackpole. And Brian Young, the ma the magnificent author of such classics as Honor's Gauntlet and A Question of Survival. I loved Honor's Gauntlet. It was Honor's Gauntlet, right? Yeah, no, that was my okay. first battle. I didn't try to say that wrong. And on the opposite team, watching very carefully to try to eke out a victory, is art director at Brent Evans and Big Red 40 Tech. Today is going to be a wonderful battle for our purposes here. Not only is it, uh, this is going to be the breakthrough. We have gone, we went from a nearly a defensive battle yesterday, but today the Iridani Light Horse units are not happy that the Draconis Combine is bringing the fight to them, even if it is an unknown mercenary unit. They're all, that's all right. The ELH will take the fight to the Combine soon enough. All right. Because this is a mercenary war chest campaign, they had the opportunity to spend some of their victory right. points yesterday to uh, repair some mechs, improve some of their pilots, and have some fun. We're going to try to show that behind-the-scenes work today before, as we get close. We had the damaged Star Slayer rearmed and repaired, rearmed the Quick Draw, rearmed and repaired the, uh, the Caesar. Repaired the pilot of the Ostol, always a tough thing, and then uh, helped to rearmor some of the other mechs. So we're going to jump in in just a quick moment. Uh, we Once again, we will be watching the chat in between, so if you have any questions, feel free to jump in. We will try to get to them when we can. But until then, the next two hours will be the fight of the century. Thank you all, folks, and we look forward to seeing you again. Well, bye, everyone. I guess we're going to be playing a game of Battletech. Um, I have a different partner this time. I guess uh, Mr. Hansa, he just couldn't quite cut it. Couldn't handle it. He undermined me at every turn last game. I saw it for myself. So this time, I've got Brent Heavens on my son. Hansa suspiciously died. <laughs> suspiciously. We, we cannot explain or deny his, uh, his location at this time. <laughs> no one's sure where he went. So the, the scenario here we're doing, uh, you all have a, we're taking the fight to you, like Michael said, and you have hidden units on the map, and you're set up wherever you want to, and our objective is to get the Eridani Light Horse from this side of the map to that side of the map, and hopefully not die. I don't like our odds, especially with your setup. It's uh, aggressive. It's aggressive, yeah. You're being very aggressive. I feel like you, know, you guys are being passive aggressive towards us. Well, we, that may be, but you're being aggressive aggressive toward us. We and we are. We 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 definitely are. Absolutely. So now we get for the honor of the dragon. We are. So I won initiative every single turn last game. <laughs> Dude, we you're definitely rolling this. No, time. no, we got absolutely smashed. Really? Yes. So that means you're rolling initiative this time in order to stop that terrible luck from happening. Excellent. So it's time to now. It roll is time initiative. to roll initiative. <laughs> Looking you in the eyes as I roll. I'm terrified. I got a five. I got a seven. See, this is a bad omen. No. <laughs> screwed. It is not good. <laughs> you guys are, yeah. So they have us where they want us. So they get to move onto the board now. So their first movement point is obviously the board hack. Absolutely. And then they get to do whatever they like in that respect. We're doing two, 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 two for initiative. I like that. That's so good. just giving you a heads up. Hmm. Okay. You want to move this forward? This is last game forward? we did two things. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we move forward and then you move forward? So they will, you will move forward, then we will move forward. Okay. No. Because, because we don't, we're too, our hidden units can't move. Right. So they don't count in the initiative order. So they move forward, we move two, they move. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so we got to move four first. Yes. That's even better for our side. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay. Ooh, what's in well, Mike, goodies? where do you think is going to be the path Board of least resistance? Ooh, we don't need well, them. look, the easiest place to get off the board is There's some very well-worn Jade Falcon. But we'd be here. idiots if we did that. <laughs> You'd um, beat the Air Danny Light Horses if you did that. No, I can't. <laughs> But they I don't just see be... what you said and what I said are are incorrect. They could both they could exist be, and they could be expecting that time. But I, for any light horse, quite <laughs> frankly, I, I, I see us. I see us. We think green. Uh, you know, and 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 You know what uh, Aerodonny Light Horse stands for? E L H. Everybody loves Hansa. So the thing is, is those are the fastest Mac Two. These are the slower Macs. Back in the lore in right. the early days. Nobody so if we it. actually nobody went up that nobody side, knew it. Nobody knew it, it would yeah. take them longer I, to I bring see, in I, I feel that might not be true. Yes, but... Some if, say it is so. Yeah. Some say it is so. Yes. Far earlier, is that, is that some true, just Brent Evans? Go toward the slower one. Uh, okay. Me and all other yeah, fans of the Great White Ninja. All right. So that's that's counterintuitive. Well, you're saying Love that movie. correct, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. We also got support assets. I believe 25 I mean, points worth. We can do that. And, uh, no, no, I no. Just no, no. Just, just, yeah. I've never used them, them before, though, so. Oh, uh -huh. that's, oh, that's not. Oh. Yeah, this is brutal. Yeah, 25 battlefield support points, and those are the ones I picked up. Why don't you go first with the lighter ones never as far as you can, and we'll see where no. they move their Wow. Mind. And then so I, I assume we need to, we can, uh, we need can to roll decide that to see if we want to split where, up. Where, or... Oh, I, do you know how to do it? I only know that you know, I mean, we've not used it before. Right in here. Yeah, I, I thought we had to relatively, uh, relatively write easy. down where that's happening. You know, the general running, I mean, just, you know. But this is spectacular. I hope I mean, you know how you, to play them. You can go um, right through there. We're going to find know. out how to. Right. Yeah, yeah. I've never used these before. Getting, so. Excellent. I've learned. Get into cover. Okay. Right. right. So, so go ahead with yours. So he's got 11 runs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so just, eight. We, we've not really. Eight, nine. Nine. Okay. So it's ten. It's eight, nine right. to enter the light woods. It, it's plus one to enter the, the woods, just so you know. Oh, okay. So, and then so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ten, ten, turn, turn 11, eleven, and then twelve. Twelve. What? But I don't know. I don't know. It's eleven. eleven. So, so you're just here and turn. Or, or I should have just started here and turned before I got to Lightwood. Save myself. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And go. Okay. And uh, either I, way. Yeah. Be right down here. Then. Yep. So yeah. So that's his eleven. So that's that's uh, red okay. with the good call. 10 to 17. Yep. Yep. So this one has been spent. Okay. All right. These Excellent. Ones, we just declare it. I love it. Declare it, and that's that. I and love it. the flea. Glory to the defenders. You got 14. Yeah, usually there. I play with artillery running. on board, so I'm like. Uh, nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> so for that locust, here's what right I think you should there. do. Run it's that way probably gonna be ours. really fast. It's going to die. And if something gets in your way, turn. It's going to die. Yeah, but it's not, not, as, it's yeah, not even as fast there. as their guys. And I saw my time. chance to use the, oh. the, the John Cusack quote, quote, and I went for it. Better Off Dead, now. one of the greatest movies of all time. Yep. Okay, so there are those. You're going to do... Oops. I'm gonna destroy that Irby is destroying everything. Well, I can't wait till we deploy him, because that's going to be... Oh, if they've got off-board artillery, we are so screwed. Yeah. <laughs> How come we didn't get any support shit like that? Because we have way more battle value. So, so because we have so this battle's got to be even. Why? I I, I know, don't know it's never even in warfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pick the stuff that looks cool and you want to use, and you. They were so warfare. embarrassed yesterday. They decided they needed to give them an advantage. Oh well, that <laughs> makes perfect sense. Then. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Um, let's see. So this is the these guys. I wrote out the first. This team. here is the star player. Okay. So if you just want to, uh, so if he deploys beach, there, you know, I can jump him into that. Uh, oh, really? What's his? What's his? Only three that I oh, know. he's got a six. Are they on your map? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you might want to go I'm further gonna, over there. The, All right. I just mean those are the ones we can target. And then. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can actually pick ones that are actually I'll pick two. And then for him, so he's got there a six. Go. So 
Excellent. Let's start here, then. I'm doing uh, he jumps six. Yeah. I mean, I can drop Do I have to declare them now? Oh, yeah, you got to write them Yeah, down. yeah. So you've got th so well, right. you might even want to just so go up so there. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, no, that's right. That's going to be a, the three to four on there. Okay, just we've got four down. units moved. Sweet. All right. So, uh, so I will... And we need to move two? Yep, just two in general. One okay. like so uh do we have movement dice? Uh, those things? You don't need move oh uh, yes, yes we do. These are our ones. Okay. I admit I dislike this because it does not show the terrain that we're in on the die. So I'm going to go this way. I am not moving, but I am standing in trees. That is showing all terrain modifiers that my mech is covering up. And then... And... Do you have one you can move, or do you want me to uh, do both? Do both. I'll, I'll okay. follow up. I'll do get my steps in next turn. He is doing the same thing. He is also in light woods. Standing still. There we go. Brian's got their heavy hitters anyway, so he's really yeah. the one to be more concerned about. But the I, honest truth is Brian could deploy on that map completely bypass this. So Yeah. But we've got speed, so we yeah. can close that gap quickly. Plus we have the the improved t tactic of de luring them in with our bodies. Oh yes. Yes. However, we'll, we'll I know, I know. that. Uh, remember, both maps are applicable. If Big Red doesn't sleep or eat, he will be victorious. Uh, Mad Cat 352, if I, I've said it before, if I don't sleep or eat, I will perish. I will no longer be alive. So that would be that would be absolutely tragic for me personally. <laughs> we'll send angry letter back to Comstar via LRM or Long Tom. Look, Comstar, Blake be praised. Uh, may they watch over us. May we all file, follow oh, and drone like glorious pick, like. Did we need to pick our commanders? Lorcan, and do why we are need you to so pick that to secretly? Okay. Oh, um, he's the commander. Who what? Okay. Do you have any 2-3 pilots? I do, in fact, have a 2-3 pilot. Because we need to pick one we of did. our two, three pilots to be the commander. Um, what, 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 what does having a commander do for us? Or against if they us? kill him, we lose a lot of points. If we find and kill theirs, we get a lot of well, points. points. But okay. we don't know which one it is. All right. Well... My, mine is, is 50, which is, what is yours in terms of 50. And stuff? Oh, I've got a 60 and a 70. Yeah, so you're going to be more armored than I will. I think we're all actually pretty comparable, to be honest. Um, which one has the highest movement? I'd say maybe, maybe yeah, five, yours, eight, five, because eight. you can get out of there faster. Oh, okay. So let's just, all right. yeah, okay. All so right. it's the, okay. Yeah. When it's predetermined. Yeah. 